<laughs> Hello, my friends. Welcome. All right. Are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this. I'm going to make sure that we're going live in all of the right places. Welcome to When You Lead with Heidi Mitro. So welcome to those of you that are new to this community. Welcome to the OGs of this community. Welcome to those of you that are catching this specifically live. Will you please say hi? Sometimes you just need someone to say hello to you or hashtag live. Please let me know that you're watching. Let's see. Hi. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Looks like we're all set. So what you need to know every week inside this community, Tuesday is at 10 central. We're going to go live with When You Lead with Heidi Mitro. Today's topic, we are talking about guilt. Hold on. Let's get rid of all of these. I do not need to know any notifications. We're talking about guilt today. I would love to know in the comments how you handle guilt, right? If you have ever felt guilty in the last five minutes, have you have said, oh, I can't do that. I feel guilty or, ooh, I have mom guilt. I would love to know that. Write down hashtag guilt in the comments if you are navigating any of that. Hopefully, because you are here, we are going to change your relationship with guilt today. Here's the format of how these calls are going to go, how this show, I should say, is going to go. How we're doing this is we're going to have a topic each week. When you lead with blank, we're going to define it. I'm going to share with you what's called the etymology. What's the origin of that word? And then we're going to reframe it and give you some action steps. We're doing all of that in under 30 minutes. Some shows are going to be 30 minutes. No more. I'm working on ending on time. Some are going to be 15. What I want you to know is 10 a.m. Central on Tuesdays in this community, your life has the potential to change. Are you going to be here? Okay. I'm looking at my notes here because I want to make sure to cover everything that feels really important. So this show is for you. If you have ever said, I just feel so guilty all the time. I want you to really sit with that. There are very, very few things in your life where guilt is the right response. If you punch me in the face for no reason, you should feel bad about that. <laughs> if you are maliciously trying to hurt someone, you should feel bad about that. That guilt is actually a feeling of something's up here. This isn't okay. If you have consciously gone out of your way to be unkind, to be of disservice, to put obstacles in someone's way. You're damn right you should feel guilty. Here's what happens all of the time with the high achievers that I work with. They're feeling guilty about things like taking that yoga class. They feel guilty about working. They feel guilty about being a stay-at-home parent. They feel guilty about not being able to make it to everything. They feel guilty about not cooking organically. They feel guilty about feeling guilty. And what is happening is we are being taken away from the work that we are here to do because of guilt. Let's define it. I am a sucker for words. I want to know. I love words. I love the etymology. I love language. I love this concept that our language gets to evolve. And that is part of what we're going to do here is to evolve your language. So mm -hmm, by the end of the show, you're going to understand why guilt is your best friend and what it wants you to know. So let's define it. Guilt. <clears throat> the responsibility for having done something wrong. Responsibility for having done something wrong. That is the definition. The etymology of this word from the old Engli English of guilt or jilt, G-Y-L-T, crime. <sighs> crime. <laughs> Let's talk about it. It is not a crime to go to yoga, right? <laughs> it is not a crime to take care of yourself. It is not a crime to say no. Let's, let's dig a little deeper and, and do a little bit of a, a further map of crime. Crime is from the Latin root of cerno, C-E-R-N-O. Here, I want you to write this down. This is the reframe. Cerno means I decide. I give judgment. I decide and I give judgment. That's cerno from the root of crime which is the root of guilt. Let's think about this. 
are you actually committing <laughs> crimes? I don't think so. I would love to know in the chat the things that you feel guilty about. When you say I have mom guilt, let's talk about mom guilt specifically. I've never heard the, the phrase dad guilt or husband guilt, dude guilt. That this guilt tends to, to be um, marketed towards women. <laughs> Basically, you should feel bad all the time about all of the things that you are doing and all of the things that you aren't doing. I'm not having it. Part of what we're doing inside of When You Lead is revolutionizing what this looks like. We are questioning the status quo. We are questioning the things that have been spoon fed to us that is keeping us separate, that's keeping us disconnected, that's keeping us from actually making the difference that we want in life. And the high achievers that I work with are usually between like late 30s and mid 50s. They're at the season where they're like, holy shit, this ride ends. Please stop wasting. And I mean it when I say wasting, I want it to irritate you. I want you to be pissed off at me about it. Stop wasting your life feeling guilty. Stop spending and whittling away your life feeling bad because someone else told you to feel bad about something. I want you to lead. I want you to win. I want you to be two feet in your life. I want you to be at this space with Cerno where you are deciding. You are the one who decides. You are the one who is giving judgment to what you're doing in this planet. I decide. If you get really quiet, really quiet <laughs> and you listen to your guilt. First of all, I want you to stop saying I feel guilty all the time. Just stop it. That's, that's number one. And I want you to reframe it with, I decide I'm giving judgment to this because typically guilt is about how other people are going to feel about you. That's really what's happening. Instead of saying, I'm guilty, I want you to say, I actually care more about what they think than what I think. I'm prioritizing their opinion of me over my opinion of me. That should make you feel like shit, by the way. That's when we get to listen to guilt. If you have a conditioned response to feel guilty about everything, let's talk about how guilt feels in your body. This is part of what we do inside of when we lead is to teach you what your body is trying to tell you. So for example, Oh man, I had guilt this weekend. I did. So I am working through this growth, this expansion. My business is expanding. My boundaries are, are solid, but they're also like, oh, I'm, I have the capacity to hold more. My, my comfort zone is expanding and it's causing physiological challenges in a good way. Your physiology is for you. This guilt is actually for you if you know how to listen to it. So I got lit up over the weekend. My boundaries, um, I was the one that was breaching them. I wasn't being definitive. I was being mousy. I was being, I, I'm taking this other training this week. Um, I was being coy. I was trying to be um, polite. Oh, shit, I teach. Isn't that annoying that what you teach are so many? <laughs> but I was hot this weekend. I got lit up and I got to where I knew my tongue was becoming a liability, but I had been feeling guilty about asking for more support in our home. I was bubbling up with resentment, but I was so busy that I wasn't dealing with the resentment. So of course, last week I ended up under the weather, which is my body's way of going, hey, hide, slow down. When I listened to it, it was saying, you're gonna have to have some difficult conversations with the Metro crew. You're going to have to delegate more. You're going to have to be definitive. If you want them to up their game, go first. One of my cardinal rules, and I, I wasn't following it. I was following it. It just, I, I needed the spaciousness to get clearer, which is part of what we talk about getting clear, but you go first. How many of you have read the book, Loving What Is by Byron Katie? Loving what is, put it in the comments if you've read it. So I was judging my neighbor. She has a judge your neighbor worksheet. <laughs> I was judging all of the metros in my house real harshly. They should do this, they should do this, they should do this. Part of the work of, of this loving what is, is you have to turn it all around. And I ate a shit ton of crow this weekend. 
So Sunday afternoon, I wrote down all of these things that I wanted to reframe. I didn't want to talk to my crew at that point because I, sh I would have ended up feeling guilty for being disrespectful. It would have, I would have been unkind. And so I said, I need to process some things. I lit a bonfire. I sat <laughs> at the bonfire for six hours. I started it at like three in the afternoon and I sat there. I was almost despondent. And I started to feel guilty. I started to feel like I'm doing something wrong by, by not being a bubbly mom. I'm, I'm doing something wrong by not engaging with them more fully. I'm doing something wrong by not sitting at the kitchen table with them. And when I really got quiet with my guilt, it was like, it's okay to feel those things. I felt them in my heart. And that guilt was leading me to my heart. That guilt, guilt is an arrow. Guilt is pointing you to the physiology that you need to listen to. Guilt is showing you like, hey man, here's, here's a direction. If you can think of it like at the airport where they have the air traffic controllers, guilt is an air traffic controller leading you where you need to go. When I said to guilt, like, this is hurting my heart. And I went to my heart and I was like, what do you need me to know? And she said, you're doing too much. You are overcompensating. One of the criticisms that I had over the weekend was, I just want someone to make my life easier. That's how I was fired up, you guys. I, <laughs> how many of you relate to that? Where you're like silently judging everyone in the kitchen with this face, like, just wish someone would make my life easier. Part of doing the work and turning it around was, I wish I would make my life easier, which is a big old bowl of crow. And so I started making a list. I started listening to my heart and I was like, okay, okay. I want someone to make my life easier. I want me to make my life easier. How do I know how to do that? What do I already know? And what I know to be true about myself, because I know my Colby, I know my human design. I know how I operate in the world. I started making lists. I started brainstorming. I started brain dumping. And I was talking to guilt the whole time. Like, what else do I need to know? Thank you, guilt, for pointing me to my heart. Heart, thank you for continuing to talk to me. And I was able to go from, I'm going to freak out on my family to family, I need a minute. And if I talk to you, I'm going to say shit that I don't mean to sitting in front of a fire and listening to my heart, listening to what she needed, knowing that my body is wise knowing that I know who I am. I know how I process and I am powerful beyond what I know. And I listened and I wrote it down and I had pages and pages and pages of where I could make my life easier. And part of that required me to recognize uh, again, that I was the one making my life harder. I was not asking for what I needed. Partly I didn't have clarity on what that actually was. And that's okay, we're learning in a labyrinth. A labyrinth is basically a maze that you can't get lost in. And we learn in spirals. We learn by descending. We learn by going deeper into our relationships with ourselves. If you will allow guilt to put you in a position of Okay, I'm deciding. I get to I get to have judgment about this. Okay, guilt. Where in my body am I holding this? Maybe it's in your shoulder. Maybe you're like, "Oh man, yeah. Thanks guilt for pointing me in my shoulder. What burden am I shouldering?" Maybe guilt is like, "Oh god, it gives me such a headache." What is giving you a headache? Maybe it's low back. You're like, "God, every time I feel guilty, I've got low back pain." Where are you feeling like you are carrying too much? Your guilt is guiding you home to your body. It's one of the reasons I went through the body mind coaching program. Your body is wise. Your feelings are for you. We think that when we feel guilty, that that is our cue to do more. Stop it. <laughs> Very simply, if you are, if, if my guilt was like, you're making your life harder, the simple solution, and there's always a simple one, was stop it, do less, make it easier. And so we had, a, we had a come to Jesus talk last night at story time. So we do story time every night at our house. 
And I laid down and Mike and I laid down, Mike and I had to have our own come to Jesus talk, which actually was so powerful of, I want more. I want, in fact, I want it all. I just can't do it all. I want you to have it all. I do. I want you to win. I want you to have it all. I want you to look at every part of your life and go, I am winning this part of my life. And if you are not winning, you're learning. I want you to win. And I shared this with them. I shared the vision of where When You Lead is going with my kiddos. And I said, we, I want this company to be a multi-million dollar company that revolutionizes the way small business does the back end of their work. I want this company to be a company that revolutionizes how we work together. It's strengths-based. It's equity-centered. It is a space where everybody on this team gets to be exactly who they are, and that's what makes us powerful. I want to go into the coaching world, and I want to shake it up. I want high achievers to win. I want them to know their value. I want them to have a purpose. I want them to know how to give it language. And I want them to have rock solid boundaries so that they can change the world. I just got off a conversation. Thank you, Liz. I said, I'm still that six-year-old girl in my bedroom who I want to change the world. I'm her still. What else are we going to do with this one precious life? What else are we going to do while we're here? I'm in a very, very unbelievably privileged existence. And I do believe to whom much is given, much is required. And I guarantee you that I am going to spend and invest my life in making the world a better place. And I would love for you to join me. I would love to have the opportunity to teach you what happens when you lead. Because when you lead, the world changes. When you make peace with this round and round. How many times are you going to feel imposter syndrome? How many times are you going to say, I need better boundaries? How many times are you going to let guilt drive your day and then overfunction? And guilt is just going to say, mm, still not enough. How long are you going to live like that? That's, that's a legit question. How long are you going to do that? How long are you going to live without community? How long are you going to stay in a listless state? What would happen? If you actually decided, when I lead, the world wins. Yep, because when you lead, the world wins. It just does. When high achievers finally go, I can make peace with this shadow. I know what to do when guilt shows up. I know what to do when imposter syndrome shows up. I know what to do when I am pressed against the wall. I know what I'm doing. If you had clarity, confidence, direction, what might be possible for you and the world? Let your guilt guide you. Today's episode is about guilt because it is such a barrier for people doing their good work in the world. And it's a piss poor one if I can be so bold. Guilt is not serving you until you listen to what she actually wants you to know. Find out where you hold guilt in your body. Go to that space and say, what is it that you're sharing with me? And write it down. Listen to your guilt. Where is she housed? And what is she saying? And if you think this is a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, fine. Unsubscribe, leave. That, I, that's okay. I'm cool with that. For those of you that this resonates with, do it. Where do you hold guilt in your body? I'd want to know in the comments, where does guilt live? What does she want you to know? And then write it down. And if you need support with what she tells you, if she's like, you need to quit your job, man. You need to ask for more help in your family. You need to delegate. I don't want to talk to this person anymore. I I want this person in my life. I feel bad about this. I do owe someone a genuine apology. Once you get the answer, if you need support and what to do with that answer, I can help you. I can help you. Uh, This When You Lead community can help you. Write it in the comments so that you can be helped. Okay? Guilt. (sighs) Man, I got hot there. (laughs) Guilt causes doubt. We talk about this inside of When You Lead. Because part of clarity is doubt. We're making peace with it. It's why the retreat is called This Too is Sacred. 
I have two tickets left for that retreat. I got to know today though. Like I'm, I was supposed to let ARC know on Friday, <laughs> our final numbers. I have two tickets left. If you want a ticket to that retreat, you better DM me today. Okay. The retreat is called this too is sacred. And the reason that we're doing that is we have to make peace with the perceived shadow. We got to make peace with guilt. We got to make peace with guilt that causes doubt. Doubt means to be of two minds. Stop it. Let doubt lead you. Where do you hold doubt in your body? What is doubt asking of you? You don't need to be afraid of yourself the way that you have been. It's actually scarier to not do the examination. It's actually scarier to not, not listen. Because then you get to make up all these all of these things that are never going to happen. Well, if I don't do this, they're going to hate me. What if they already do? <laughs> if I don't overfunction, this is going to happen. How do you know? Why don't you test your theory? Right? Let guilt guide you. Find out where it's housed in your body and listen to what your body wisdom is saying. If you're like, oh my God, Heidi, I live in my head. I got you too. I can help you with that. DM me. I live in my head and I will help you come home to your body. Your body is the source of wisdom. This is how you are intuiting being connected to the cosmos. Your body is your gift. Your body is how you are having an experience on this planet. It is high time you start listening to her or him or them. Whew. All right, we did it. <laughs> I want to know your takeaway. I want to know what pissed you off. I want to know what's firing you up. I want to know how this episode is making you feel. Write it in the comments or DM me. We've got a couple of things coming up. One is the retreat. We're retreating in Minnesota, middle of October, less than a month. If you want in, I've got two tickets. You let me know. At the end of October, I'm going to be hosting a boundaries challenge. Stay tuned. We're going to be talking about it. In November, we are launching When You Lead. Oh man, it's a core foundations program that is essential if you want to lead in this world. If you want to lead with purpose, if you want to lead with commitment, if you want to lead with clarity and confidence and direction, if you are so sick and tired of being sick and tired, this program is for you. If you know you are here to do more, if you feel like you're losing in areas of your life, this program is going to help you win. I want you to win. And if you need a little funny for today, go to Instagram or my Facebook page and listen to my, my daughter, Ivy Lou, saying she did her, her impersonation of Miss Piggy, who says it's fun when you win. <laughs> All right, my friends, I will see you next Tuesday. I cannot wait, cannot wait to hear your takeaways. All right, I'll see you soon. Be kind to yourselves.